Joining us now is Paolo Ramos, MSNBC contributor and former deputy director of Hispanic media for Hillary Clinton. Paolo, as you watch what's happening there and we prepare for tonight and what could come with more people trying to enter the U.S., what's going through your mind? I wish that the image that we're seeing right now would be different. No, I wish that these headlines would be completely different. I was imagining a Thursday like today to read the Biden administration finally reinstates people's legal rights to seek asylum. No, the Biden administration finally completely departures from Trumpism. I think there's this unprecedented opportunity to do what's morally right, to do what's legally right, and to completely part ways with that. And yet we have two different stories. No, yes, they're lifting Title 42. But they're also reinstating a new asylum ban, which essentially pushes migrants to apply for asylum in another country before entering the U.S.-Mexico border. They just announced that policy. That's something that President Biden campaigned against. As they're lifting Title 42, they're sending troops out of border that is already completely militarized. As they're lifting Title 42, they're telling people to not come, which completely underestimates the desperation that asylum seekers are feeling as they're making these treacherous journeys to the United States. And all of this is happening in the backdrop of a GOP that continues to fuel this anti-immigrant rhetoric, which is the danger that I well, see. Well, I think you're right about the anti-immigrant rhetoric. That's one issue, but there's also the reality on the ground. And there is not a, a way for people to come into the U.S. right now in an organized fashion to be able to have their needs met and to have those asylum cases processed effectively, right? I, I think that is what we have been pushed to believe. But we also know that the United States is the wealthiest country in the, in, in the nation in the world. Um, we know that we do have the infrastructure. We have the resources. Humanitarian aid groups have been doing this for years. They've been welcoming asylum seekers with dignity for years. They've been on the ground as all of this chaos has been happening. There is a way to do it. And so to me, the most important part is you need to process people, but you need to keep in mind that the heart of this whole discussion is that we have to reinstate everyone's legal rights to seek asylum, which is what the U.S. law says and international law says. And I believe that we are capable of doing that. It is not an easy it's solution not. here to, uh, to, to fix the immigration system, and, and Congress needs to take action. I'm going to talk to a Congress member in just a moment, but I can feel your passion. I just want you to be able to explain what you see as the, the biggest misunderstandings about migrants and the immigration issue. I think two things. The first one that comes to mind is, um, as, as complicated as it sounds, it, the painful reality is that deterrents are not enough. Even if Secretary Mayorga says, do not come, that will not work. The new norm is what we're seeing on the screen. Why? Because there are dictatorships in Venezuela, in Cuba, in Nicaragua. Why? Because their violence is the norm in a place like Mexico. Why? Because if you're a transgender Latina in Latin America, the average life expectancy is 35 years old. You're likely to die before you reach 36 years old. As long as the United States continues to be the country that it is, people will come. And so we have to come to terms with that reality and with a, with, a, with a system that works. The second misunderstanding is this idea that Republicans have fueled, which is migrants are criminals. No, they're bringing in crime. There's this invasion. More than half of Americans believe that to be true, that there's an invasion happening. The great replacement theory is no longer fringe theory. It is mainstream. That is not true. According to the Texas Department of Public Safety's own data, Native-born citizens are more likely to commit crimes than undocumented immigrants, if that is a measure that we want to talk about. That's the truth. Yep. Yep. Those are the facts. Thank you so much, Paolo Ramos. Really appreciate you being you. here and offering your perspective on all of this and bringing us some of that data. It's important.